Hello everyone, welcome to Geeks for Geeks. So today in the playlist of DFNFA complete guide, we will be uh, looking at some operations which are supported by a deterministic finite automata. Okay. So our today's discussion point is we will be looking at two different operations supported by DFA that is union and concatenation. Okay. So we will be trying to explain the given operations with some example. Okay. So firstly the union union operation. So let's say that we have L is a set of all strings which start and end with different symbols. Okay. So L is a collection of string which will start and end with different symbol. So before that, let me clarify that in our alphabet we have only two symbols A and B. Okay. So there can be two such things. One is, I mean, one kind of string can start with A, whereas end with B, another kind of string that can start with B, end with A okay so if we tell that that this is the language l1 okay where the language l1 is a collection of all the strings which are starting with a and ending with b and language l2 which is a collection of all the strings which are starting with b and ending with a then we can directly say that l is basically the union of l1 and l2 okay our given language l is basically the union of l1 and l2 Okay, because it is the collection of all the strings which are available in L1 as well as all the strings which are available in L2. Okay, so in the similar way, we can also say that the DFA, DFA corresponding to the language L, okay, is basically the union of the DFA corresponding to language L1, union of the DFA corresponding to the language L2. Okay, so let's see how this D1 will be. So our D1 DFA is kind of this. Okay, so this is our D1 DFA where you can see that if the string is starting with A, if the string is starting with A, it will look for the ending symbol as B. Okay, if the string is starting with B, then it's a dead state. Okay, it's going to a dead state. So it is basically the DFA for the language L1 where the string is starting with A and ending with B. Okay, and for the language L2, this is the corresponding DFA. Okay, so this is the D2. Okay, the D2 corresponding DFA of language L2. So here we can see that if the string is starting with B, then it will look for ending symbol as A. Okay, if the string is starting with B, then it will look for the ending symbol as A. Okay, if the string is starting with A, then it will go to a dead state. Okay, so if the string is starting with A, it will go to a dead state. Okay. Now, our final DFA D, as I told that, it will be a union of this D1 and D2. Okay. So, let's see how will it be. So, this is our D1. You know, this is our D1 and this is our D2. Then, our union language, I mean, our union DFA, the D will be D1 union of D2. So, here is the D. You can see if it is starting with A then it is following basically d1 okay so this is basically d1 section if it is starting with a and if it is starting with b so this is basically the d2 section so you can see that all the initial state initial state of d1 and initial state of d2 is basically merged here okay here basically you can see this initial state of d is basically the initial state of d1 as well as the initial state of d2 okay from there we have removed the dead states okay we have removed the dead set because that is not necessary if this if the string is getting a then we will go to the d1 part if the string is getting b we will go to the d2 part okay so in this way the union operation is working on the dfa okay i hope that this explanation is clear right now we will look into the next operation that is called the concatenation operation we will look by a given example so our example is it is a um, collection of strings so so l is a collection of string where the starting symbol is a and ending symbol is b okay so it will be a collection of strings where the starting symbol is a and ending sim ending symbol is b okay so let's say there is our sub language l1 where it it will be a i mean in the l1 language we will get all the strings which are starting with a Okay, all the strings which are starting with A, after that anything can come. Okay, and L2, suppose it is another language where we can see all the strings which are, I mean, 
L L two will take all the strings which will be ending with B. Okay, so L one will be a set of strings which will take all the all the strings which are starting with A, and L two will be a set of strings where every string will be ended by a, the symbol B. Okay, so we can say that our given language L is basically the concatenation of L one and L two. It means that all the strings from L one will be concatenated with all the strings of L2 okay suppose the smallest string of L1 the smallest string of L1 can be A okay and smallest string of L2 can be B okay so the smallest string of L can be AB right where the starting symbol is A and the ending symbol is B okay so let's look at the concatenation operation in terms of the DFA okay these are the languages let's look at in terms of DFA so basically l1 for, for the language l1 we can have a corresponding dfa d1 okay and the language l2 we can have a corresponding dfa d2 okay so in the similar way our dfa for the corresponding language l will be the concatenation of d1 and d2 okay now let's look at d1 so you know that this is our d1 where the initial symbol if the initial symbol is a then it is going to accept if the initial symbol is b then it is going to a dead state okay if the initial symbol is a it is going to be accepted because the language l1 is telling that the string should be starting with a if the string is ending with b okay that will be our another dfa this is d2 where all the strings should be ending with b okay so this d2 dfa will accept all the strings which are ending with b and d1 will accept all the strings which are starting with a now let's see the concatenation operation okay so concatenation the concatenated dfa will look something like this okay so here if you if you see that this is dfa d1 okay where all the strings are starting with a and this is d2 where all the strings are ending with b okay now in the in the concatenated dfa if you clearly see that this part okay this part is basically representing the d1 okay here you can see if the string from the initial state if the string is starting with a it is going to some part okay but if the string is starting with b it is going to the dead state right so this is the uh, dfa1 of this concatenated version and from here you can see that dfa2 is getting started okay from here the dfa2 is basically getting started okay so overall the moral is that the final state of dfa1 the final state of dfa1 should be merged with the initial state of initial state of dfa2 okay so in this way suppose this di is coming before dj okay then the final state of this D, dfa di will be merged with the initial state of dfa dj okay so that's the concatenation operation I hope that with this example your understanding is clear if you find any issues or any queries or comment please put it into the comment section and thank you for watching the video